It's your host, Kevin Oldham, and we're back with another episode of Franchise My Business, a podcast for franchisors hosted by franchisors. And today, I'm super pumped because we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, which is real estate. Um, every once in a while, you run across a business that that uh, I'd say is very methodical and does a lot of work when it comes to transitioning from their core business model to being a franchise or, and that's exactly what this organization has done our guest today. Um, I'm excited to have Matt Lavender on the phone. He is with uh, New Again Home Houses. They're based out of Bristol, Tennessee, and they've been around since 2008, but really started to decide to franchise in 2015. And we're going to talk about what that journey has been like for them, some of the cool technology they've built and all sorts of other things. So, uh, Matt is a phenomenal guy. He's the CEO. They've grown substantially to the point of $25 million in revenue over the last year. They've been ranked among, among the top franchises in five different categories. I mean, talk about putting points on the board. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kevin. Glad to be here. Oh, man. We're excited to have you. We're excited to have you. You know, one of the things that I love about your business. And this is just consumer's perspective. You know, everything that goes into your messaging is we don't just flip houses. What does that mean? What's your difference? Because I think everybody sees house flippers. So what's different about you guys? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to flip a house, but flipping a house is really a, a job. And I've, you know, there are people who are passionate about the house and flipping the house and love the HGTV shows. That's not me. I've never been passionate about flipping a house. I don't have those skills. My wife will tell you I'm not very useful around the house, but my passion has always been about building a business that flips houses. And so we've really tried to build our franchise as a, as a, business that flips houses. Nice. And I was looking at some of your guys' work online. Um, You guys do amazing work. Like just beautiful, beautiful renovations, you know, giving an older house that maybe was a little bit rough, uh, that whole new look that people want today, whatever's in trend. Like that's got to be a pretty cool job to take something. Yes. Every single one of those was done in 30 minutes, just like they are HGTV. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, 30 minutes finish, right yeah we finish them up right before the credits roll and then if we get behind we push a we push a hurry button and all the contractors in the near nearby rush in and fix everything up in the last five minutes that's hilarious that's hilarious because that is the perception that people have and it's like man it just uh there's so much that goes into it you have such a a challenging job because you know renovating the house is a big task. Like you got to have all these different professionals and things like that. It's, I want to uh, go back to, it, to go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I know where you guys yeah, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's there's a lot of moving parts in it, and it's one of the reasons that uh, big companies have a tr- have trouble in this space. It's di- it's just a difficult business to scale, mm-hmm. and that's why that's why it fits so well with franchising. Yeah, yeah, absolutely let's go back to 2008 when you founded the company. What were you doing before 2008? Hmm. I was, um, I was a college soccer coach Mm -hmm. and teaching and teaching history. So my passion has always been some form of coaching or teaching. And I think when you have that, when you have that, that teaching gene, Mm-hmm. It just stays with you. Like you don't, you don't leave it behind. And so, um, I, I coached, um, I coached for 12 years and really, really enjoyed it. And I was doing that and then transition, transitioned into our new again houses business and started flipping houses on the side. And then that became a, that became a full-time gig in itself. And so transitioned out of coaching. That's really cool. And coaching, I mean, Having a background in coaching makes you, in my opinion, a strong franchisor because that's a lot of what we do is coaching mm-hmm. these other entrepreneurs who are who are flying the flag of our brand. We'll probably circle back to that later on. So 2008 kind of goes from a side hustle to your main thing. 2015, what 
you know, you, you and the organization determined that you're going to start expanding via franchising. What happened yeah. in 2015 that really led you down that path? Like the decision point where you said, Hey, I think we got something here that other people would you know, appreciate other entrepreneurs. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much a systems person and a, and a process person. And so when I started building this business in 2008, locally, I built systems for how to, for how to do this. And, and we, we just kept, kept improving them as we grew, as we grew better and or grew, grew bigger. And so we were doing about 30 houses a year, just here, here locally, but I had built systems to where we could do a lot more than that, but we're actually based in a, in a pretty small, in a pretty small town. Okay. And it just wasn't responsible to do any more houses than we were already already doing. Yeah, and we had also we'd also had built some capital backing for our projects here, and we had we actually had more had more capital than we really had than than we could do. And so those guys kind of nudged me about thinking about franchising, and I mm-hmm. fought the idea for a couple of years, and then in 2015. Um, really started to embrace it. And I think part of that is personality because I just naturally like to build things. Yeah. And um, if I feel like I'm only maintaining things, I get antsy. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's <laughs> that <laughs> so do you, do you guys have investors in your business? Cause it sounded like maybe you did like the guys that were pushing you, you you've taken on some partners to, for some growth capital. Throughout we, the years, we or? actually we actually have not. We have okay. we have bootstrapped bootstrapped the whole business. Awesome. Um, Sam Ferguson joined me early on, um, and he has become a partner. But we do not we we have not taken on any debt or capital. We've been able to bootstrap it, which has been uh, really really difficult, and it's probably yeah. slowed down the growth. You know, looking back, that's probably slowed down the growth. But everything's a trade off, and it's it's yeah. good to have it's good to have control. So our investors are people who who actually um, loan money on the projects. So they oh fund, I see yeah yeah, yeah. They fund so the construction projects and the acquisitions. Nice. nice nice that's really cool. No, that's really really cool. So how many locations do you guys have now? We uh, we are up to forty. That's so impressive, down, man. We're adding we're adding about two a month right now. How are you doing yeah. that pace of onboarding it franchisees? Is. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, franchising is a constant. It's a constant rebalancing. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is just inherently a high growth business model. And once once a concept gets traction in franchising, it is built to grow quickly. Yep. And so as you know, as as a founder on the on the corporate team you just have to constantly sprinting to stay ahead yeah and and thinking ahead a year and making making adjustments ahead of time which is tough because you're investing capital before you have revenues right and at some point along the way you just have to really believe have to really believe in your team and your concept um, to to do that yeah. I always call it kind of crossing the chasm, right? You know, you've got this, 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 this business that's cared, you know, provided for your family and your team and your community all these years. And then all of a sudden you're going to take on this new initiative that frankly is a bigger thing than probably building the core business. You know, it's like, Oh, yeah. I've got to have infrastructure to support these folks. Oh, and maybe you've done some of that work, but Hey, we've got to have training. We've got to have all these, all these things. Right. So yeah. did your how did how did you cross the chasm? Because I think that a lot of people, particularly our listeners, have a concept that that they've always in the back of their mind said, "Hey, would other entrepreneurs get benefit out of this if I packaged it up and offered it to them?" And I get those mm-hmm. questions quite a bit. And one of the risk factors I always tell them, I say, "Hey, it's it's a big it's a big lift, particularly if you have a small team. You know, maybe it's just like mm-hmm. two founders." Mm-hmm. Like, all right, it's not this huge. I mean, there can be a you know legal work and all those things, but it's, it's not this huge capital expenditure. It's more the time that it takes to build the mm-hmm. franchise, and 
you know, one of the dangers for a lot of people trying to migrate to that is that they take their eye off the ball of the, of the prototype, the core thing that's been that's basically funding this effort. How'd you guys cross the chasm? I mean, I know that you had some capital that probably mm-hmm. made it a little less stressful for you, I'm guessing, yep. manageable maybe for than yeah. some entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. Our our core business has was profitable. And so that that really helped that really helped us to to bootstrap. But you're right about the chasm. I would say that when you're at that point, you I, I never realized I was crossing a chasm. <laughs> Looking back, it was a lot of little steps and I had mm-hmm. crossed the chasm. There was no there was no going back, but I never realized I was taking that step because <laughs> It's it's just a lot of little so a lot of little problems and a mm-hmm. solution, a little problem, another solution. And the reward for solving every problem is a new problem that you've never seen before. <laughs> like that is that is that is the that's, reward. That's, that's business and it's franchising, but particularly in franchising. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just it, the, your reward, the state, I love that. Your reward is you get another problem to solve. And if you're a problem yeah, solver, never, like, it's fun. Yeah, a problem that you've never seen before. And more importantly, probably no one in your friend circle has seen it before either. So right. it's, it's a unique, it's a unique problem. But you know, the journey to franchising is a lot of those little little steps. And then you look back and you've got, ah, oh, now I've got five. I've got five franchise locations that are mm-hmm. counting on me to solve these problems now. Yeah. And then you look back and I've got 15. Now I've got 15 people counting on me to solve these problems. And so, yeah, you crossed a chasm, but I don't think you ever realize um, how many steps there are or yeah. how significant those steps, those steps are. Yeah. And you're right. Cause they, cause they all add up, you know, I, I've been mm-hmm. on a text message with my partner and, um, uh, two of our franchisees. And it's just like a little small problem that we get to solve today. And when I woke up today, I didn't see that problem coming. Right. It's yeah. like, all right, cool. Like we just mm-hmm. get to solve that problem. All right. Not a big deal. Yeah. And I know yeah. I never really thought yeah. about it, but yeah, your reward is you just get more problems, you know, eventually, <laughs> eventually you gain traction. I'd say you've gained traction because reality is while you guys started working on your franchise in 2015, you didn't put your first location on the map till what 2019, I think you said, right? Right. So you spent yeah. four years kind of building. And I think I think that's the other thing is a lot of people, particularly like dri- driven entrepreneurs, if they make this decision that they're gonna franchise, it's like this thing that they think they have to sprint through. And mm-hmm. everybody's got their own pace. Mm-hmm. Like if your business is booming and you're thinking about franchising. You know, and if, and if you're going to be the, the 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 project champion for that as the CEO, mm-hmm. you got to make sure that your you know the core business is taken care of and that your team can run it, so you can go allocate whatever percentage of time to to this project, right? Yeah, but it's would, not this like fast fast thing that you're going to get mm-hmm. done. You got to build an operating menu. You got to think about every single thing that your franchisees may need or want. You know? Yeah, and you have you have no idea of knowing the scope of all those things when you start. No, like I look back at the you know the early business plans and the spreadsheets of and it's, it's <laughs> aspirational numbers, how, right? You're like, hey, we're gonna how, do all how this naive, stuff. <laughs> how naive I was. But if I look back to those, like we you start building the concept in 2015 and launch in 2019. Those years, a lot of those years were probably spent franchising our local business. Okay. And so the first step in that path is really you have to franchise your your local business, like your core business, because you have to step outside of that. Mm-hmm. So you have to set that business up for a stranger to operate as well as you operated it so that now you can focus on the franchise business because they are two completely different full-time jobs. They're both, they really are. (laughs) And if you think, if you don't franchise your own business first, you won't have enough left over to, to, to do the franchise work. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great counsel too. So I also noticed on your website when, when you're talking, you know, on the franchise side of your website, you guys have some cool tech. 
that you've, Mm -hmm. it sounds like built some proprietary technology. You know, Mm -hmm. if somebody is thinking about getting into the fix and flip type of business, I think that, you know, there's obviously the human capital component, knowing who your vendors are, they're going to do everything, your contract, your subs and all those, but the technology side of it is also something. So I'd love for you to just to dive into a little, you know, high level summary of, of, um, what's it called? Master suite. Master suite. Yeah. Yeah. Of master yeah. suite. What does master suite do to help you as a franchisor and also help your franchisees? Like what's in that kit of tools? Yeah. So it, it's a really sophisticated, um, software, software package and it does, it does several things. And so there's, there's in our business, there's several large rocks that have to be in place in order to build a business that flips houses. And so you've got to have, you've got to have volume to create competitive advantages. And where, where we do that is the software helps with lead generation. Okay. And so it, um, it helps us identify properties that would be good prospects and, and market directly to them. So there's a lead generation part of it. There is the analysis part of it. And so it, it attempts to turn a flip into a math problem. And so we're very, we're very analytical. We don't get emotional about properties. That's where people get in trouble. And so yeah. we try to turn that flip into a math, into a math problem um, it, with the analysis, because you have to make decisions quickly and accurately. And then the third piece is once you do that, once you have the lead, once you analyze, able to analyze it quickly, then you have to have the capital to confidently acquire it. Right. And so um, it, it also serves as an underwriting platform for our capital partners who are funding the projects. So when we analyze a property, uh, the software, as the software approves it, then we have confidence that it's, that we're going to have the funding and we don't have to do like contingency. Financing. Yeah. And then the fourth thing that it does is it, it helps us actually execute on the projects because really our core business, our value add is adding value with construction. Mm-hmm. And so we're taking properties that have, haven't been touched in a generation and we're our typical project. We're putting $80,000 rehab into okay. that. And so now you're dealing with contractors and um, residential <laughs> residential construction is a messy business. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of humans involved. Um, the contractors are not techies. And so we have to take these ideas that we do in the software and then communicate them to the people on the, in the ground that are actually doing the work. Nice. And so the, uh, it, it, it does that. It, it does that as well. And that's really cool that it also goes and, and kind of helps you guys determine if it's, you know, if it's in your buy box. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's like really cool. And so if I'm, if I'm hearing this right, your franchisees don't have to go out and find capital partners to fund their deals. That's done at, at the headquarters level through right. Master Suite. Right, right. That's and, and awesome. For, for the capital partner, you know, their most important thing is minimizing risk. Yeah. And so we're a, with a franchise, we're able to enforce compliance. And so our, they know our guys are going through the processes and um, it, it ultimately... In, in some ways, the, our franchise system is a way to connect entrepreneurs and capital and minimize mm-hmm. the risk. Right. Um, and so in the most basic form, that's that's part of what we that's part of who we are. I love that. How, how do um, so let's say I open a location in Kansas City. You know, how do I do you guys help find the subs to that do this work? Are they do you have relationships in place like? Yeah, I think that's probably one of the harder things too. Is like, yeah. how do you find a team that you can trust? How do you find a good hardwood floor guy? How do you find a good, great painter? Like, how do you guys go about helping your franchisees mm-hmm. solve that part of the equation? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. It goes to something even bigger than that, which is, you know, we we talk about trying to turn a flip into a math problem, but it's not just numbers and it's not just processes, because franchises, you know, good franchises are built on great processes. But even if you even if you have good numbers and you have good processes, there are always humans involved. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's where things get messy and that's where it gets it gets difficult. And so I think when people start thinking about franchising, 
They think about the processes, but they don't think like you've got 40 locations, like how many human beings and, and personalities are attached to 40 locations that are flipping 12 houses each. Like right. you're talking about thousands of thousands of personalities connected to that. And some of them, some of them use process. Some of those contractors might use processes and some of them may not. Most, some of them mo- most likely do not, right? They're just coming yeah. in. Like, hey, that looks good. <laughs> so early on, we figured out like that, that's a pain, like that's a pain point that software can't solve. Mm-hmm. And so the only way to solve those problems is to have a, a, a coaching, a coaching support system. So, so people that can coach our franchise owners through those decisions. So getting, we know that getting the right contractor, the right persona of contractor is one of the more important, important parts of success. We figured that out really early on, but software is not going to do that. So we've, we built a construction support team and part of their function is to help franchise our new franchise owners identify and vet and, and actually set those contractors up for success. Because even after you find the right contractor, you still have to set you still have to set him up for success. Right. And, and that's that's more art than science. And so we've built a, a, a construction support team that that provides that support. But there's there's the construction part, but then there's also the business part. So you can get the t- like you we, we can coach someone to flip a house. But we're not wanting to flip houses. We're wanting to build a business that flips houses. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of our franchise owners don't necessarily have business experience. Um, and so we've also we've also had to add uh, business coaches. So we've got a business coach team who meet every franchise owner, regardless of how long they're in the system, meet at least uh, once a month with the franchise coach. And what we're doing there is building their business. So yeah. we want when we're building an ecosystem there, um, building their business so that they can scale in their local area. Because we want them to do, we want them to flip 12 houses a year, but we want them to flip 12 houses a year and be able to go on vacation whenever they want to. Right. If, and if, if you're just flipping houses, you, you give up the quality of life. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we keep going back to build a business that flips houses. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, it's interesting that a lot of your your um, your franchisees didn't have business ownership experience, which probably means they weren't flipping houses as well. You know, it wasn't somebody who was, or, or are you getting conversions of people who were kind of doing it themselves? And they said, "Hey, I need a I need a team. I want to level this up." Like, you, do you have some of those? I would consider those to be conversions. Occasionally, um, but our typical franchise owner has does not have experience in flipping houses, and that's not a bad thing from our perspective. Yeah, because it, this is a process business, and if we can teach them the right processes from scratch, it makes it a lot easier than fixing bad habits. Yeah, yeah, it's like. It's like adopting a dog that's, you know, eight years old or whatever. And is it potty trained? Yeah. And you're like, well, I got to try to potty train this dog. But it's yeah. got some bad habits, maybe. So I can I can totally see how having, you know, a blank canvas, just somebody who wants to own a business and being able to form them into the, you know, the new again houses way could be super beneficial, not only for them, but also for you guys. It sounds like you've kind of pegged who your <laughs> ideal franchisee is now at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that's a working. That's that's interesting. Like you would have thought we'd have had a persona by now. <laughs> you know but what? We're, we're getting ready to have our our annual conference, and so we have everybody comes here, and it's it's really cool because that the community I think is one of the things that people don't talk enough about in franchising. Um, but you know, you, everybody's in the same room, and you've got people from vastly different walks of life like we've got yeah. professional actors who have been in movies in in hollywood and then an engineer and a teacher and a fireman like all these different careers that they come but the one thing they have in common is they wanted um they wanted to be an owner like yeah they didn't want to build they they didn't want to keep building things for other people. They wanted 
to build something for themselves. But that doesn't, but they're, a lot of them are coming from jobs. So mm-hmm. owning a business is, is new and, and everybody knows that started a business, no matter what it is, it's, it's tough and it's lonely. And, yeah. um, the, the community, the, the community part of it is one of the most pleasant surprises of franchising. So, you know, you talk about all the, the hard stuff you don't anticipate mm-hmm. good stuff that you don't anticipate is, is like that community. And so the cool thing about franchising is you have a, I don't know, pick a career, like a, an engineer comes into the system. Well, they've been successful at whatever they've been doing and they have, they're bringing a career of success into the system and they make us better. Like they yeah. bring something new to the table. They'll do it. And and so our job as a franchisor is to, is to see that and then build and then build that out. So everyone can benefit from that. So every time a new person comes in, we try to, we, we feel like it makes us better. Yeah. And, and that's, you, cool, that's really cool. You hit the nail on the head around the thing that I love most about franchising because we would, I have seven or eight conferences, national conferences, you know, a thousand people at them at our, at our last company. And I always loved that conference. Now, as, as one of the people who was on all the time, it was the most exhausting week of my life, yeah. but also the most rewarding because there was something cool about being part of the reason why all these people were getting together and rowing in the same direction and, 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 and sharing best practices and really cheering for each other because they're in separate markets. Like they, they're not competition. Right. And it yeah. does make that entrepreneur's journey so much less lonely, which mm-hmm. I think is one of the biggest probably negative things that most people don't think about with the business ownership is it's just freaking lonely. It's really hard. It's really lonely. It can be depressing. You know, it yeah. can be also exhilarating, <laughs> but doing yeah. it with other people makes it more enjoyable. Yeah. It, lonely, it is lonely because you're left with like the reality is that no matter what the business you're, you're making big decisions. Like you're making yeah. life changing decisions and you're doing it alone because yeah. Like your friends aren't making these decisions. Like they have to make them. Like who are you gonna who are you gonna go to that you really trust? Who doesn't have a vested interest? Yes, yes. (laughs) An ulterior motive, right? It's like who can really just speak truth into me and my business and my problem altruistically with no motive, and that's hard. Yeah. Unless you. Yeah. You're lying. One of the most underappreciated things about franchise system is systems is that is that community. And you're in a you're in a family of other people who genuinely care about you because you can help them and they're going to help you. And it's 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 just it's it's a really it's a really unique it's a really unique thing. Yeah, it's very, very rewarding. So if people want to learn more about your company or connect with you, like what are the best ways for, for that to happen? Um, yeah, I mean, our, our website is probably the easiest, uh, new, new again, houses.com. And there's a, there's a franchise, uh, there's a franchise tab there. And we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of information on there. We're adding, adding stories and, um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stories. <laughs> lots of stories, lots of stories. <laughs> well, keep doing awesome work out there in Tennessee and, and as supporting these entrepreneurs throughout the United States. Um, I think that you've, you've, you've kind of adapted, you've taken an industry, in my opinion, outside looking in that isn't always like super positive. You know, when you talk about buying houses that maybe people need to get rid of in a relatively short amount of time, but you, you have this light and airy brand, you know, this very positive feel to your brand. And and I can kind of tell, uh, just through how you're, you're operating your organization. That's one of, of deep caring, probably not only for the homeowners, but also definitely for your franchisees and the people who are going to buy those houses. So keep doing awesome work. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. It's a, it's a business of, pro, it's a business of problem solving and, and it's, it's really real. It's really rewarding for sellers who have a, a property that's a liability to, to come up with a solution for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Kevin Oldham. I have two asks. Number one, if you enjoyed today's conversation with Matt, 
and you feel like it could benefit one person that you know, please go ahead and share this episode with that person. And then number two, personal favor. Uh, I really want more people to benefit from from hearing conversations like Matt's. So if you uh, if you enjoyed today's episode or you enjoy the show, please smash subscribe on the platform you're listening on listening on right now. And until next time, I'm your host Kevin Oldham. Thank you very much, and have a phenomenal day. Hey.